a brand new article just came out last night in the Wall Street Journal. I want to show you this headline. This is serious because this is now the mainstream media. Granted, a little more conservative leaning over there at the Wall Street Journal. But the mainstream media is saying that Joe Biden is showing some signs of slipping. Participants in meetings said the 81-year-old president performed poorly at times. The White House said Biden is sharp and his critics are playing partisan politics. Huh. This is the Wall Street Journal. Again, I, I you know, they, they're going to go with this line. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if you don't believe the 34 guilty counts, where we can't really even decide just exactly what he's guilty on, if you don't believe that, then you're part of the problem. If you believe that Joe Biden is maybe slipping and maybe a little too old for the job, then you again are part of the problem. And it's just partisan politics. You're trying to undermine the president, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Despite the fact that the Wall Street Journal went and interviewed 45 different Democrat and Republicans to come up with this story. So they did a whole slew of interviews, talked to both sides, and the whole time, get a load of this. And I quote, from the journal, the White House kept close tabs on some of the Wall Street Journal's interviews with Democrat lawmakers. Ooh, I bet they did. After the offices of several Democrats shared with the White House either a recording of an interview or details about what was asked, some of those lawmakers spoke to the journal a second time and once again emphasized Biden's strengths. Here we go. This Representative Gregory Meeks, he's a New York Democrat, said, quote, they just, you know, said that I should give you a call back. So the White House heard what he said and then said, KJP, hey, call him back. Call that Wall Street Journal reporter back <laughs> because, quote, we thought it was important that all perspectives be represented. That's according to the White House because, you know, they were asked about it. To correct what he said were, quote, false and politically motivated claims. It's politically motivated. It's false, apparently, to say that, you know, at 81 years old, Joe Biden is feeling it. I don't think that that's like politically motivated. I mean, maybe there's a political motivation. I get it. But like, let's also just be honest with each other. You don't even have to interview 45 Democrat and Republicans to, to come up with this. You can see it almost every day. I mean, we can see it in the transcript, the Time Magazine interview, right? Time Magazine, where, you know, he's just all over the place and ah and um, and, and the full transcript of the Time Magazine, as the New York Post put it. I mean, they came out with a good headline about this thing. He, he's got some problems. Like, he just doesn't know what's going on. The facts about basic economic stuff, for one, were not there. Quote, President Biden forgot key facts about the economy, foreign policy, and his time in public office during a sit-down interview with Time magazine last month. In fact, he even mixed up Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. I don't know how you get those two mixed up. Like, I really don't. Granted, they're both sort of political foes, but, I mean, one's from China, and his name is Xi Jinping, and the other is from Russia, and his name is Vladimir Putin. I mean, we get two different languages. We got two different countries, two totally different philosophies. I mean, I get it. Yes, they're both in the faux category, but come on, Joe Biden. You ought to know who's who even there, right? Well, apparently he didn't in this interview. So he repeated a false claim that wage increases have outpaced inflation during his presidency, lowballed the amount of U.S. foreign aid to Ukraine since Russia's invasion in February of 2022 and overestimated both Japan's defense spending and the population of Africa. According to this interview, wage increases, he said, have exceeded what the cost of inflation is, which is what you're talking about as prices that were pre-COVID prices. All right, this one has just gotten me every single time. It makes me really, really mad because for some reason, the White House is, I don't even know if this is his cognitive ability or if they've actually just chosen to lie. Like they may have just actually chosen to lie on this and they think that nobody's going to notice except for, you know, you know who, economic reporter over here who actually cares about this stuff and watches this stuff and actually does look at things like real, real, real wages. All right, because I love this chart. I'm going to show it to you again. There's this chart of wages under Donald Trump versus wages under Biden. And this is why it hurts so bad, because this is adjusted for inflation. And you see where we are. We're not even back to the mean here with Joe Biden versus wages under Donald Trump. 
having been way, way up. In fact, there's been more research done on this. And if you look at even, you know, you can, you can look at the entire Trump presidency versus Biden. And again, what you find is that people feel better because their wages are that much higher. And this even included, you know, the downturn of COVID, et cetera. So he messes up these economic facts all the time. We don't know if it's because he's just not with it anymore or because he's deliberately lying, but either way, it's not good. It's absolutely not good. We know he's not really with it anymore though, right? I mean, you look at how he's been faltering recently. I've got a couple of clips I want to show you. It's kind of disturbing. I, 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 I want to go to this one. It happened just days before the state of the union. It actually had me concerned. Like he was not going to make it through the state of the union at the time because he can't seem to thread his thoughts together. If you watch this, the reporters in the room don't quite know what to do because he starts drifting away. It's, it, you know, unfortunate. You think about elders in your life, right? Maybe grandparents or, or parents as they've gotten to that stage. And um, fortunately, my parents are still in very good health, but I can remember grandparents kind of being there. And, you know, it's hard to watch. And here we are watching it on national television and it's the president of the United States. Let's take a picture. I love questions. I better not start the questions. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> What's your message for Thank Super you. Tuesday Thank voters? You. Everyone, please move this way. Super Thank Tuesday, you. say, do you have a message Thank for you voters? Guys. Thanks. Come on. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Is that not awkward to see? And then there was this interview that Joe Biden did with an MSNBC reporter. And at one point, like, you're kind of wondering if he even remembers who his wife is. They start referring to her as Dr. Biden, and it, and it takes him a minute. Let's watch. I have not made that formal decision, but it's my intention, my intention to run again. And we have time to make that decision. Uh, Dr. Biden is for it. Mr. President. Oh, Dr. Biden thinks that uh, my wife thinks that uh, that I uh, that that we're that we're doing something very important. Okay, so you get the picture, right? Like he is not in good shape. But when the Wall Street Journal comes out with a front page article and admits that he's slipping and has sources on both sides of the aisle. Brand new report, guess what? Somehow the White House thinks it's all politics. That, that there's you know a malicious intent going on. Listen, they talked to Democrats too, okay? This was not just a Republican hit job. This was the Wall Street Journal talking to both sides, 45 lawmakers on Capitol Hill. And they all say, you know, He's not who he once was. And they actually talked about how he amazingly used to be really good at deal negotiation, et cetera. And he kind of had this knack for understanding what other people wanted, et cetera, and would somehow bring things together. And he's not that guy anymore. I mean, I never thought he was that talented, frankly, to begin with, but whatever, like, let's go with it for a second. He's definitely not there now, right? Definitely not there now. And I think that this is really, 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 really going to hurt him. I mean, we know he's got the economic vulnerabilities. I showed you the chart, for goodness sakes. I mean, income not being what it was. I mean, part of that is that you have a Federal Reserve that's all messed up, right? And they keep printing and printing and printing and printing. And that is um, an unfortunate aftermath of what we dealt with in March 2020. So they shut down the economy and they're like, okay, we got to do something. And so they printed. And then Joe Biden offered a third stimulus check and then Next thing you know, Chuck Schumer, et cetera, they're all writing checks, like just blank checks. Okay, what do you want? What do you need? And, and Joe Biden, if he gets his way, he would do more, right? But for all those, those college kids that he wants to pay for their educations for, they would just keep printing. Well, this is not a good thing going forward. It's one of the reasons why I do encourage people to whatever you do, you know, make sure that you are diversified, make sure you're looking at everything out there in terms of your portfolio. One of the things that you can look at is gold because gold is something that has proven its value over thousands of years. I do think that other countries are looking at what's going on. They're looking at what happened with Russia, for example. And they're like, wow, the U.S. just like suddenly shut off the spigot. 
like the U.S. can confiscate our investment in treasuries because they are the world's largest economic power still, amazingly, right? So as the hegemonic power of the world, we have a lot of say and a lot of power and we can turn things off, which is why I think you see so many emerging markets now saying, well, maybe I'm better off in gold, or at least let me hold a portion of whatever I own in gold. If you're interested in gold, I encourage you to look at it. I'm not your financial advisor, but I do encourage you to look at it. It's, it's part of a well-diversified portfolio. And the people I trust for that are American Heart for Gold. A great, great team over there. I especially like the, the offer that they've got right now associated with me and my viewers. If you watch this show, make sure you... My name, Trish, and you make sure you bring up this $15,000 worth of free silver. 1-844-495-1115 is the number you need to call. You can text right now, get out your cell phone, text Trish to 65532 to learn about up to $15,000 in free silver. Or you can just go to this handle. I'm going to put it in the show notes, but it's very easy to remember because it's trishlovesgold.com. Trish, easy, easy. Give them a look. I mean, look, it, these are these are difficult times. These are crazy times. And Joe Biden has faltered on the economy. Inflation is here to stay. I think whoever comes into the Oval Office, a major inflation problem in the future. 